Çekiliyor zaten halde fakat. Şu kamera tutuyor. Velkommen til Films TV. I denne uge er der blandt andet biografpremiere på den islandske gangsterfilm Blacks Game, som handler om den unge splicede Stebi, som synker længere og længere ned i øens kriminelle underverden. Der taler om et nordisk mismask af Pusher og Goodfellas, som til med er produceret af danske Nikolas Winding Refn. Og vi har talt med filmens instruktør, Oscar Thor Axelsson, som forleden slog smut forbi København for at diskutere sin spillefilmsdebut. Ja, yeah, I men jeg I var really impressed by the book. Uh, the, and I, I, I immediately saw this, that this would be a great movie, and it's it's in my favorite genre, and uh, it's a genre we haven't had in Iceland. So I was very sort of, as a film buff, like okay, I, I, I owe it to <laughs> to to Icelandic audiences to to try to do this movie. Um, and yeah, I mean it's very hard to do your first film, what whatever it is, and uh, and uh, we we went through the uh, economic collapse in Iceland, and the the film sort of was postponed, and. Uh, There was like a, a year of limbo basically we weren't sure we were going to do it and uh, but for me it's you know I'm I'm going to start a new project I'm just going to stick with this one and you know try to keep this alive and, uh, and we felt very ready <laughs> when we when we uh, when we eventually started shooting and just like to briefly because you mentioned yourself the, the economic collapse and I, I'd just like to hear how how it did it affect sort of the Icelandic film business was was it a, a big impact It was a big impact. Yes, uh, the uh, after the economy collapsed for a little bit, you know, nothing, you know, happened. But uh, but then the government decided to slash the funds, so they, they cut it down by something like thirty percent or thirty-five percent or something like that. And that that's a big cut, and it had been sort of you know growing by every year, but now it was like a, you know cut down, and also. The, sort of before it was cut down, there was just like this limbo period, and uh, they sort of froze all the uh, grants that were outstanding, and and uh, you know the filmmakers, you know, we, we you know nobody really knew what, what was going to happen, and uh, so it so it went from being maybe five six movies a year to maybe two or three, and and actually the last couple of years have been really tough. I mean, we we, we were the only film supported by the the film that shot last year. No, but like you say, it's a genre that that houses a lot of really great movies, and mm-hmm. you talk about your inspirations in, in, in past interviews, and it's a genre that's also attracted, you know, a lot of really great directors, sort of like Martin Scorsese and also Nicholas Winding Refn, Tom Tom Tuber, and and so yep. on. What is it about this this criminal underworld that makes it such an attractive domain to tell to tell a story? Yeah, it's somehow interesting to because I mean it, it's a world that people know about, you know, that, that it exists, but they don't know much about it normally. Uh, and I think people are fascinated by it because it's it's part of society. But I mean, how is it? How is it really? <laughs> um, so so I, I think this, this this curiosity is one thing, and then it is it, it's exciting. You know, it's massive drama, and uh, you you know, and violence is very sort of cinematic, and uh, and, sort of, and and people do crazy things, and it, that that's sort of the norm in it. You know, and uh, take risks and. Uh, So I mean, it's it. If you look at uh, cinema history, it's always you know these kind of movies have always been exciting. You know, they've always been sort of they're exploring themes that it's harder than other movies. And uh, so yeah, I, I think I think people are sort of curious about it and 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 excited to you know for the visuals. As a foreigner, I I'm very interested in, in in because I've never heard of the criminal underworld in Iceland and how pronounced it it is there. Also because it's a Uh, of course, there are not that many people compared to sure. like sort of yeah. Do you know how big it is or how big its influence is? It is. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's quite big, and uh, and uh, the violence has grown, you know. And it, uh, I mean, we're still fortunately <laughs> pretty much there are no guns, you know, in use. I mean, but it's sort of I think we're getting closer to that point, you know. And uh, normal people, you know, they like everywhere else. I mean, they're some not not, not in touch with it directly, but uh, but it's there, and and you you see it on the news, you, and you see. You see it from the, <clears throat> from like the the, the statistics in the in the news. Ten, uh, fifteen years ago, there would be big news if somebody was importing, you know, was was stopped in the airport with like fifty uh, uh, grams of cocaine or something. But these numbers will today maybe be two kilos, you know. So it's like a, and you can, you can sort of see it from the news how it has grown, you know. So it's.
It's a it's a it's a it's a big big part of, part of society, like like everywhere else. And how does Nicholas Spinning often get involved in the project? Yeah, he uh, he is very uh, close friends with uh, Thor Sigurjonsson, who was one of the producers. I was maybe six months before the I think uh, b- before shooting the movie, I was doing sort of the last changes to the script, and uh, I was struggling with it a little bit. And I and I had been looking at the Pusher series. Uh, and and, and uh, Thor asked me, do you want me to you know show the script to Nicholas and see what he you know what he thinks and if he can help out and uh, so he read it and he ended up liking it and uh, and helping with uh, helping me with sort of finishing the script also sort of when I was preparing to shoot it you know he would sort of give me advice and so like sort of give me confidence a little bit and uh, for me it was great because he's you know he's, he's somebody I admire for his movies and also for how he will. How shall I say? He sort of pulls no punches. I mean, he he, he takes huge risks, you know, and he's so he's always true to to what he is as a filmmaker, and I and I uh, I, I I massively respect that. So it was almost more of like a e- eco boost, you know, just go ahead and do it, you know, and uh, don't be don't, don't shy away from the violence and uh, th- things like that. So he was he was mainly involved in that p- period, you know, l- leading up to the shoot. But what else is, is uh, on the horizon for you afterwards? We've had something about a, a time traveling movie, sort of Charlie yeah. Kaufman S. That sounds incredibly interesting. <laughs> I love I love time travel. So is, is that uh, also in the cards or? Yeah, that, that's a, the. I thought time traveling is more like a. It's like a mind transmigration. You know, it's like a, it's like a weird thing. I mean, I, I, I think saying it's a Charlie Kaufman story sort of explains it uh, better. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I would love to in an ideal world, you know, what what my dream is is to be able to go between genres and and to do different movies. Um, uh, that being said, you know, if I would have to choose a genre, I'd probably do like the thriller or you know, sort of similar to the to, to Black's Game, uh, and I, and I I'd be, I'd be fine just doing that. <laughs> but uh, but ideally, I'll, I'll I'll do different movies. But I I do get sent a lot of uh, thrillers <laughs> now. <laughs> I think based on this movie, and. Uh, yeah, so so there, there's a few projects that are that that might happen. Uh, one of them is this movie, The Key Man, but it's not set in stone or anything like that yet. So we will just have to see what happens. Husk, at du kan finde alle vores tidligere Films TV-udsendelser på Films under Films TV-fanebladet og også på videovideo.dk i iTunes og via vores gratis Video Video-app.